Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're taking a look at Arctix Linux. It's an Arch-based distribution, and it's very impressive. But before we get started, please like and subscribe to my channel. Remember, it doesn't cost anything, and at the end of the day, if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. Here we go, Arctix Linux. This is a very beautiful operating system. I just booted it up in the virtual box. It's got a whopping two gigabytes of memory and two CPUs, and when you download it and put it on a USB or open it up in VirtualBox, this is the screen you're met with when it boots up. As you can see, we've got all of our desktop icons here. And then up top, we've got our applications. You can click on that and they drop down. And then you have a dock down here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to look at their website, arcticlinux.org, the art of Linux, simple, fast, system D free. It says right here that Arctic Linux is a rolling release distribution based on Arch. It uses OpenRC, RUnit, or S6 as INIT because PID1 must be simple, secure, and stable. Then down here, you've got Arch repositories made optional, service config files check back in it kind of gives you some things that you can look up here and then over on the right you've got documentation community telegram group twitter facebook mirrors list people the core team developers contributors and then more resources rss feed news archives logos artwork so they've got a very very robust community so if you actually run into any issues i'm sure you can get your questions answered there so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and close out of this and let's look at the desktop let's do a right click you can create a launcher create url link create folder create document Open terminal, open in new window, arrange desktop icons, desktop settings, and then of course your applications. Let's look at desktop settings. Right now, this is the wallpaper you got. You got several others to choose from over here. If we pick on that and close, that is a pretty good looking wallpaper. We'll leave that up. We'll come down bottom and we'll pull up the console and see if it comes with H top out of the box. And it does not. Let's try top. We pull up top and we can get a look at what kind of resources we're using. States that I got just under two gigabytes of memory assigned to this system. And right now, at rest with terminal open, we are using a whopping 415 megabytes. That is really light. So let's go ahead and close out of that. That's impressive. Let's open up the file system. And as you can see, the file system is Thunar. And you've got the green folders up here. And then over here, you've got computer, Arctic, desktop, trash, file system, browse network. It's just your standard Thunar file manager. Simple, sweet, and to the point, lets you get things done. Now, if you go over here, preferences, you can pull up preferences on Thunar. Display, you can view settings, last active view, local files only, or you can have never, but we're going to go ahead and leave that local files only show thumbnails on local files icon view use current folder side pane you can make the side pane bigger if you want to let's run that up to 48 and then your icons over here get bigger and if you got trouble with your eyesight that'd come in handy and then your tree pane you can also make it bigger as well behavior single click to activate items if you want to i like to stick with double click and then file transfer, context menu, and then advanced folder permissions. You can have it ask you every time when you try to access a folder, or you can turn that into apply to folder and contents or apply to folder only, which means you can adjust it so you don't always have to give root access to get into certain folders. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Down here, you have a web browser, which I do believe is different than the one we were using a while ago, because that's got a different icon. So we can go down here and click on this. Please choose your preferred web browser now and click OK to proceed. You can go with epiphany or you can go with the one that's already there i'm going to stick with the one we just had opened a while ago and then your home so let's go up here and look at some of the applications that we get you've got favorites your web browser mail reader file manager terminal emulator accessories you've got application finder bulk rename clipboard manager leaf pad mouse pad notes screenshot sensor view task manager let's see what task manager says we're using for property and processes it says we're using about 20 well, it dropped down to 2, 10, 13. So you're using anywhere from 0 to 15% of your CPU. It states that we're using 649 megabytes of the 1.9 gigabytes. And that's in the task manager. Of course, on top, it said we were using a little less. And over here, you've got your workspaces. They give you four out of the box. So you could leave this terminal open, go over here, open this window, and then go over here and do some other work if you wanted to. So that's pretty impressive. And as you can see up here, you've got Arctic listed here. You've got date and time right here. You've got your notifications. You've got percentage of battery life left available an hour and 19 minutes until it's charged then you've got sound settings then you've got your internet this is a really crisp environment i like this and then thunar and xf burn we already saw you get ristretto image viewer out of the box internet you've got your server browser you got hex chat and you got the web 
multimedia, you got MPV media player, parole, pulse audio, office, you've got dictionary, actual document viewer. We're going to check on settings. Let's look at appearance. Right now we're in Arctic dark. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and change it. Changes just a little bit. Ed Wida, high contrast. Let's just go back to Arctic dark. Icons. Right now we're using the mate icons. You also have mate gray, mate Fainza, high contrast, add Weta. Fonts, here's where you change your fonts. You can change your default font here if you want to change that. I'm going to go ahead and leave that where it is. Now you can upscale it if you want to for a little bigger, and then everything gets a little bigger so it's easier to see, not only in the top panel, but also in the windows that you open up. And then settings, show images on buttons, show images in menus, enable editable accelerators, enable event sounds, and then window scaling, of course, you could go ahead and scale that up, but I'm not going to do that. So let's close out of that. Back to applications. That was appearance. You got color profile, default application, desktop. There's your backgrounds again. Then your menus. You can come over here and make changes to your menus if you choose. And then adjust how big your icons are. If you want to make those smaller, you can go ahead and scale those down or scale those up. Let's go ahead and leave them at 48. You can show icons on primary display, use custom font size. You can come down here and change your default icons. If you don't want the home icon showing, file system, trash, you can take those and those will disappear off of the desktop. So we'll close out of that. And back over to system. You got bulk rename, gparted, hardware locality, install Artix, manage printing, sensor view, task manager, Thunar file manager, and then XFC terminal emulator. This is a very lightweight XFCE environment. Artix Linux takes very few resources. Now, what I did notice with this is that there is no specified software center. Most installations, it looks like, are going to be done through terminal, which would be fine. It would be easy to do that, especially if you're very familiar with Arch and the Arch repositories and the Arch user repositories. Artix Linux, XFCE, definitely a distribution you might want to take a look at if you're somebody that's not into all the bells and whistles. You just want something clean, crisp, beautiful, and easy to use. Arctic Linux definitely looks like it to me. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. It doesn't cost anything. And at the end of the day, if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.